Welcome everyone to Mail Fuzz News. I am Peter, that is Tara, and this is your Tuesday edition of Z News. We've got movie news, we've got TV news. And we're going to start, of course, with the obvious big thing. Which is that Marvel today decided to put out a studio sizzle reel for the next two years. Uh, it had, it had like a, the first half was kind of like there was like a speech from Stan Lee that they did use with some clips of the films. They even used some cam footage that people, this is so wild to me, because you're not supposed to record anything when you're in the theatre. But here are Marvel using people's recordings of reactions to Avengers Endgame in their own sizzle reel. Maybe it was just like Mark Ruffalo like didn't realize he had his phone on recording or something <laughs> <laughs> in the theater, and they felt they could use that. It's it's just so funny to me that this thing that's a, is a big no no is being used to say, "Hey, don't you love the theater experience? Here's some captured footage on a phone of everyone cheering as Captain America yells Avengers Assemble." But yeah. th- that was the first half. So obviously it's hitting for the feels and whatnot. But the, the more interesting half is the, what comes next. Well, not just that, but it's reminding you why you want to be in the theaters, right? Cause that shared experience of of Endgame that was, was you know, I got a little emotional watching it. Sure. But you, you get teary-eyed at, like, commercials that have a sad song, though. So I don't know <laughs> if I true. can. <laughs> I am such a weakling when it comes to that stuff. You're like, oh my god, he got the stains out of his shirt. Oh my Focus god. Focus groups would love me. <laughs> <laughs> but the second half of the sizzle reel, it starts to go through what's coming out, right? So we get, like, a, like some snippets of the trailer of Black Widow, and it says the date, which... And I'll, at the end of this, I'm going to run down all the dates because I think it's actually kind of crazy how they've all stacked up because everything got delayed. <gasps> but, and then it shows, you know, some of the clips from the trailer from Sang chi and it's like, oh, cool, right? That's what's coming out after that. And then it had some surprise footage and it makes sense that this is ready because it's out just two months after Shang chi But mm-hmm. Eternals, there's a couple of snippets of footage in there. We don't have the trailer yet, but we see a little bit of Angelina Jolie with her magic okay, sword. Camille. Yeah, the, the Angiani's uh, looking kind of... I'll be honest, he's got like a Johnny Cage, and I'm not just saying this because Mortal Kombat just came out, but there's, a, there's one shot of him with like a like a jacket over his shoulder and he's got sunglasses that he's taken off and I'm like... <laughs> he's Mr. Cool now. Yeah, that's, he's Johnny Cage. He's, he's uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so curious about this movie. I have no idea what to expect from it. Like, I I, yeah. I know nothing about the pr- the property or the, the characters. This is all... Comp- but then again, so was Guardians and I ended up loving Guardians, so... Guardians okay. I love Guardians too. <laughs> we can't bring up the Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, when I say Guardian, I don't just mean the original film. I mean Guardians as a as a property as, as a, a whole. Team. Yeah, yes. sure. As, as as you know, so across both movies and their appearance and the other stuff. So, yes, but you like Volume Two more? Okay, everyone knows it. Well, good. <laughs> so, so you have Eternals, right? And so you got some footage. So that's interesting. And then they just whip it out on the table. Like, there's no tomorrow. They just whip it out. And up on the screen, you get the logo for Spider-Man and No Way Home. And then Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And then Thor Love and Thunder. And those are the ones we all kind of knew were coming soon in, in the next batch. And then it hits us with Black Panther. With, because we don't know the title of this, right? What the Black Panther sequel was going to be called. So the title is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, so that's what the sequel is going to be, whatever, you know, the idea that it's maybe going to be more of the, the, the other cast from Wakanda, I mean, maybe it makes, I mean, maybe, you could have called it this anyway, even if it was still T'Challa that was the main character, but this works. This is going to be a hard one, yeah. Yeah. This is going to be an emotional movie to watch. And then after that, they hit us with a title for what seemingly is Captain Marvel 2. It is called The Marvels. And there are actually hints in the logo that they put on screen, which tells us what that means. Because the font is primarily the Captain Marvel font. But in the A, there's the symbol, which I, I wouldn't have recognized immediately. Like The internet told me this, but everyone was like, wait, that's that's Monica Rambo's thing. And given that she was teased in division, and like she's going somewhere else afterwards, we don't know where, but we assume probably Captain Marvel too, given her connection to that, mm-hmm. that film. Uh... And then the S at the end of the logo is the Miss Marvel font. And th- there was, I think it was already known to some extent that she was going to appear in, in Captain Marvel 2 after her TV show, which is a Disney Plus show that's coming uh, before then. So 
Yeah, what's your take on this? What's your take on Captain Marvel 2 being the Marvels and being essentially a three-lady team-up movie? I mean, I'm excited for it. Honestly, I don't really know very much about the Captain Marvel universe. I, I know the movie, and I sure. really like the film. And I'm, yeah, I I would like a, I don't mind a girl power movie with extra ladies for the team up. I'm all for it. I'm I'm pumped just because I, I like Miss Marvel. Like I, Kamala Khan. I, I've heard a lot of people yeah. really like her character. And apparently she was a huge part of the Avengers video game that everybody enjoyed. She, she was, was like the best part of that game. Well, everyone enjoyed the story mode. The, 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 the part that's supposed to last so you keep playing it, everyone thought was a boring grind. Well, most people did anyway. <laughs> sure. uh, but yeah, like she was the main character of the story uh, of the, the game, mm-hmm. which was interesting. I've not played right. it myself. Which, but... Honestly, which is the only reason why I'm familiar with her character at all. I haven't played the game, but people were talking mm. about Kamala Khan through that. Yeah, she, her, her and Miles Morales were the two characters, the two like new characters that were introduced uh, not too far away from each other. They kind of really cut on, and now, you know, Miles had the animated movie, and mm-hmm. now Miss Marvel's getting her TV show, and she's going to be part of the MCU. Uh, so, that's kind of... so. I mean, there are examples. I mean, Ironheart, which is the, the, the female Iron Man, uh, is getting a Disney Plus show. So, they're, they're, they're trying it with characters that didn't hit as big. Because I, I, I think no... I don't think anyone's going to disagree with me that Ironheart didn't hit the same, like, crescendo audience and, like, fandom, even just in comic books, that Miss mm-hmm. Marvel and males morales did so we could see if they can sort of take that and elevate it a lot but um and I, i'm saying that as someone who's barely read any of it i'm just talking about the perception of like people talking and the the fandom of it whereas i i sought out miss marvel comics because i'd heard such good things and it was really good yeah. i'd sought out males morales because i'd heard good things and it was really good did we get a date for all of them including the last one yeah the fantastic four Wait, skip ahead. I was going to do the list in order. Oh, I thought you I thought you were done listing them off and you had just forgotten it. No, no, there's two more before that. <laughs> so whiny. <laughs> I'm building up to it. No, no, the answer is no. Because Fantastic Four doesn't get a name. It's just the logo. It's a tease at the end. There's no, okay. that's the only one you don't get a date for. But before that, jeez. <laughs> After the Marvels. I just wanted to stop at the Marvels to talk a bit about the Marvels as a uh, okay. as a title. Uh, would you like the title on its own? Just yeah, it's fine. I think I think it's better than um. I, I think it's better than. I mean, it's a bit weird in the sense that what do you call the third one then? Technically, like where do they go next after that? I'm sure they'll figure but it out. Other than that, like it, it's it's fine. Like I like it. Uh, but uh, I think it's neater than Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Like you know, just going the subtitle route is a bit more boring. I think the Marvels mm-hmm. is a bit more interesting as a title. Yeah. Uh, but then after that, you have Ant Man: The Wasp: Quantum Mania, which we knew about. Uh, and then after that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. And then the very very end, when it says Marvel Studios, it's inside the what the movie's Fantastic Four logo is going to be almost implying that that's probably going to be next even if it's not been announced or at least one of the next few although what was interesting is i saw this pointed out on twitter is that there's actually still some marvel cinematic universe uh, release dates that are placeholders that mm-hmm. are before the end of this list which oh. some people are speculating that maybe that'll be like their deadpool movie they're doing like a deadpool 3 under mcu maybe that because it's kind of separate so that's why they've not announced it along with these or something like that but uh interesting um but yeah I, I wanted to mention the dates because one of the things that stuck out about this is that that last one that has a date in that list guardians of the galaxy volume 3 is the 5th of may 2023 which is pretty much exactly almost two years from now so mm-hmm. everything i just listed which is what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten movies the ten movies i just listed all have release dates that start this july and go through to may 2023 <laughs> That is a lot of movies in two years. Well, movies got pushed. They so did. Well, that was the, that was the funny thing. We skipped thing, a year. <laughs> is that after the year of Endgame and Spider-Man and was it Captain Marvel was the start of that year, I think? Um, mm-hmm. After that year, it was like, oh, they're going to have a quieter year by just having two in 2020. But then everything got pushed. So we now have this weird situation where we have four this year. Black Widow's yeah. July, uh, July 9th, 2021. And then Shang-Chi is September 3rd, then Eternals is November 5th, and then Spider-Man No Way Home is December 17th. We're getting a Christmas Marvel movie. Um, 
and that's a little bit quicker than expected but that's only because sony because it's the one they make money from one one every two years and it would have been yeah probably it seems like ant-man like keeps getting shoehorned in around these other big movies where it, it's a it's an odd release date where it wasn't ant-man and the wasp also like in a november date right after or right before one of the one of the big hitters it was july after infinity war it was a couple of months mm. after yeah oh, okay yeah um the ant-man series seems to be getting like the short end of this marvel stick not that they don't do well they do he's a short character i suppose so ha huh. oh, come on how, how, how could i not make a joke he said he's just getting the short <laughs> end of the stick um so yeah so 2021 has those four and in 2022 uh march 25th is doctor strange in the multiverse of madness may 6th is thor love and thunder july 8th is black panther wakanda forever and then november 11th is the marvels mm-hmm. so that's all next year that's that's not far in terms of movies like just next year is not far away no. so that is a lot coming out and then finally in t- 2023 which we don't obviously have the whole year yet um but we do have february 17th is that man in the watch quantum mania uh, so that's like a valentine's release almost and then you have guardians of the galaxy volume 3 on may 5th uh 2023 mm. so that's 10 movies in two years that's four this year four next year and then at least two but honestly i wouldn't be surprised if this you know like february may july november schedule sticks i wouldn't be surprised if it keeps being four a year after that it may go back to three but i wouldn't be surprised if it keeps the four because they have so much uh, I, I mean I, they have a ton of properties now like they just keep getting adding more and more to the the whole catalog i saw a quote today from the director uh no sorry the, the writer from captain america the winter soldier who we know is developing a fourth captain america movie now is he said that he couldn't believe like because he because he's, he's he's been privy to like seeing what the plans are because he has to like work with them was that movie listed on here no okay I mean, well that just, could be one of the placeholders <laughs> no way they're just they're just developing it they're not even written it yet <laughs> all right okay no way they, they, oh, everything on this i mean everything on the 20 21 is obviously already mostly done Everything on mm-hmm. the 2022 list is probably shot or currently shooting, I would imagine. And it's just the 2023 ones that are probably a little bit like in pre-production instead, I would guess, more or less. Um, but anyway, the, the point I was trying to make, though, is he had a quote, which was that he couldn't believe how many movies that he knows are planned that haven't been announced. And that's saying something, because we, we know like 10 to like 12 of them. Or something like that so uh, which presumably means that he knows about x-men movies it probably means that there's like <laughs> wh- whatever the next avengers movie is going to be whatever you know because we are we're getting a different cap so yeah there's going to be some sort of avengers team up at some point with the new phase and the, the new characters um yeah wow that's exciting as a fan of these, of uh, this TV show that <laughs> plays in movie theaters that will never end, and it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, I think people miss it a little bit because it has been gone, so it does kind of feel a little bit like a, a mainstay. That... I'm really looking forward to uh, the next Thor movie because of how good Ragnarok was, and I love mm. Taika Waititi. And I'm really looking forward to Fantastic Four because I desperately want it to be good, <laughs> and I, I suspect it will be. I am. I wouldn't say I'm like super looking forward to anything here. I, I'm I'm curious about all of them. I'm 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 open minded about all of them, but I haven't been like actually actively excited for a Marvel movie since Endgame. And even but even Endgame was a bit of an outlier because I hadn't really felt that way a, a while before that. Mm-hmm. I, I think ever since Civil War, I've never... Outside of Endgame, because Infinity War made me excited for it, I don't think I've been super excited anymore. The, the, the novelty of the Marvel Cinematic Universe kind of wore off around I've then. had peaks and valleys, for sure. But, like, definitely whenever there's a big Marvel event coming out, like, I, I can't help but get hyped. So, I like, as soon as, like, 
the trailer comes out, I'll be hyped. And then I'll be like, do I really care? And then I'll get close. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to the movies and see it twice. Sure. <laughs> it always gets me. Okay. Okay, well, there you go. That was the, uh, the all the Marvel stuff and the, the sizzle reel. Uh, so, a little bit of footage for for Eternals, and then you got official titles for the Marvels, which is Captain Marvel 3 and Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, uh, and a, just a bunch of confirmed release dates. I think, technically, a lot of these dates were already more or less locked in, but this was just like a, here's a roll call, here's everything. Uh, yeah, it's a hype. A hype video. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fine video. It was a fine video. All right, let's move on to other movie news. Uh, probably not going to excite you quite as much. In fact, I'm going to move this over here because it's easier to read over here. Well, let me just make it a little bit smaller so that I don't cover half of Tara's face with all of the text. Oh, here we go. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so Emmett Furla Films have began working on The Fortress, uh, which is going to be a trilogy. With Jesse Metcalf, Bruce Willis, Chad Michael Murray, and Kelly Grayson. Uh, I can't remember the last time Bruce Willis didn't phone something in, so it's kind of weird that he's signed up for something Honestly, like this. as soon as you said his name, I was like, well, I, I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> you can have a comeback. You never know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe you'll have a comeback someday. Uh, so the first installment has begun production in Puerto Rico, uh, basically right now. And it's filming back to back with the second film, but they're not doing the third film yet. They're going to like come back and do the third film there, and I almost feel like this is like a really weird, like, tactical move where they're hoping that if the first film doesn't do so well, but it gets buzzed later, then maybe the second film, which they've already shot, has to still come out, and then if that does well, they, they'll get like a second chance of doing well, <laughs> and then that'll greenlight the third one. I don't know. Not that I expect this is going to be super like expensive as things go. So. Yeah, The Fortress is developed by EFF, which is the company CEO, or sorry, co-CEO, rather, Randall Emmett and Emil Hirsch. Emil Hirsch? Okay. Uh, and the scripts were written by Alan Horsnail. Uh, the story revolves around a top-secret resort for retired U.S. intelligence officers. A group of criminals led by Balzeri breached the compound, hell-bent on revenge on Robert, played by Bruce Willis. Uh, forcing the retired officer and his son, played by Metcalf, to save the day. So it's Die Hard and a secret, like, retirement community. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not interested. That's fine. I have nothing else to add. All right, let's move on. Uh, Taylor Page has landed the female lead opposite Peter Dinklage and Jacob T Tremblay in Legendary's new Toxic Avenger <laughs> reboot. <laughs> Yeah, if you weren't aware of this, Peter Dinklage is going to star in a Toxic Avenger reboot. That's the thing that's happening. So, yes. Contemporary reimagining of Troma Entertainment's successful 1984 low-budget action comedy hit, The Toxic Avenger. It's steeped in environmental themes and subverts the superhero genre in the vein of Deadpool. Oh yes. boy. Yeah. Have you ever seen Toxic Avenger? No. Nor have I. I've, you know, I've watched the first, like, ten minutes, like, twice. And both times I've turned it off because I just it feels so shit. I just can't keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure fans are going to be upset at me, but I don't know the trauma stuff. I I, I just think I think it's just it's fallen in between this weird line where it just doesn't work for me. Despite my love of bad movies and despite my love of cheesy movies and eighties movies, mm -hmm. and for some reason that just falls in between the cracks and just like I don't think I like this. <laughs> Moving on, Apple have uh, won a competitive weekend auction. Uh, to get a Tom Hanks starring film called Finch, which was previously called Bios. Uh, and maybe they changed it because they realized people might try and say Bios instead of Bios, because it's not obvious. But it's a sci-fi film. So uh, hey perk your ears up. This is one we may have to do on Ace. And uh, maybe uh, the, the end of this story won't just end with Tara staring at me blankly, like, move on to the next story. <laughs> I'm not really sure what my role is here yet, so, for these news. React and comment. Potentially be witty. How about John Wick? I'm still thinking about movies that <laughs> don't follow the tropes of the Marvel films. If you're feeling generous. <laughs> um, so, 
the film is directed by Miguel Sapochnik. If I'm butchering that name, probably. Um, who directed some of the most ambitious episodes of Game of Thrones, apparently. So, there you go. I think the script is by first-time screenwriter Craig Luck and Ivor Powell. And Finch, a man, a robot, and a dog from a form an unlikely family as the man tries to ensure his beloved canine companion will be cared for after he's gone. Hank stars as Finch, a robotics engineer and one of the few survivors of a cataclysmic solar event that has left the world a wasteland. Finch, who has been living in an underground bunker for a decade, has built a world of his own that he shares with a dog, Goodyear. That's the name of the dog, Goodyear. Uh, he creates a robot, played by Get Out's Caleb Landry. Uh, sorry, Caleb Landry Jones. He's got a, it's a, it's a triple triple header name. Um, that did always look like a He was in Twin Peaks: The Return as well, and he always looks like a really sleazy, creepy, skinny villain. Uh, so interesting to see how he comes off in this. Uh, Who was he in Get Out? He was the brother. Oh yeah, yeah. he was skeevy looking. Yeah, he's like a proper ginger pervert looking guy. <laughs> proper yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah proper Pro- proper in the uk could sometimes just mean uh very i guess mm. yeah yeah like extreme <laughs> extremely very not like like this is... <laughs> oh we got uh, planet earth going on behind me <laughs> yes she never actually, like, bites the cat. She's just threatening. <laughs> I was saying yes to finish <laughs> if, any, if anyone was concerned. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, proper... I don't know. It sounds like you're saying, like, this is the ideal ginger. <laughs> it's one that's a pervert. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I know it kind of means the opposite of what the word actually means, but uh, mm-hmm. just to roll with it. Anyway. You got it. So, he creates a robot to watch over Goodyear when he no longer can. As the trio embarks on a perilous journey into the desolate American West, Finn strives to show his creation the joy and wonder of what it means to be alive. So, yeah, this is an apple apple of bag, this movie. So, Which means I probably won't watch it, but it's uh, exciting. Sounds like a... Sounds like an interesting premise. I enjoy... I enjoy the storyline of Data and Picard showing him the ways of being human. I'd probably enjoy this. Yeah. I love doggies. I mean, you just lied because you are going to watch it because we're going to review it on the ace. So. How am I going to get an Apple movie? What do you mean? Their service is available on, like, all the platforms, though. Oh, I don't have to, like, buy Apple TV or anything to watch it? At, at, or at, Apple Plus or something? At the very worst, you can do it on, like, the web browser on your computer. <laughs> Okay, gross. I don't want to give him my money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy about it either, right? I, I got the free trial. Uh, oh, no, I did get it once because we had to do that Shyamalan show. But no, we, the, for the free trial, the web version is so bad that I can't mm. recommend it. Luckily, my Fire Stick now has an app. So if I have to, you know, get Apple TV Plus for this. So Fine. There's Better a, be good. There's a way. I hope it's good. Um... Or be so terrible that we never watch another Apple movie. <laughs> that works. Yeah, that works for me. Uh, yeah. Uh, next up, Blair Underwood from Quantico is set to direct, produce, and star in Viral. Uh, this is not the first film called Viral that I'm pretty sure that... I'm pretty sure me and Tim did a movie called Viral a long time ago. Uh, but this is an indie thriller from York Films about a man dealing with his wife's disappearance. Um... Joe McLean wrote the script and is producing alongside Daniel Cypress and York Films' John Califatis. Califatis. Yeah, Califatis. <laughs> I'm just making, my, I'm making sure I've got the right amount of syllables in this because there's a lot of A's. <laughs> so Underwood stars as Andrew who falls into paranoia after his wife goes missing. The only way out of the self-destructive cycle seems to be through his new girlfriend, Amelia. But she has her own psychological trauma to deal with. Are they strong enough to get past their own nightmares and mental illnesses to figure out true happiness together? Sounds heavy. That's not heavy. I guess the wife's been missing for a while because he's got a new girlfriend. I didn't... It, it made it sound like she just went missing. Yeah. And I was like, wait, he's got a girlfriend already? But I guess it's some time has passed and she's just been missing for a long time. Maybe that's why she went missing. Because you already had a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to take off. Not tell you where I'm going. 
<laughs> oh, there you go. That's the that's the movie side of things. We got a TV here. Uh, Pennyworth, the DC comic series uh, about the young adventures of Spy Alfred, which is the most stupid premise ever. And the, this is just like <laughs> when I roll my eyes at like doing like sequels and reboots and just like doing like a franchise thing. Like you're doing a TV show about the young adventures of Alfred. Like, get real. <laughs> get fucking real. Like, seriously. Anyway. <laughs> Hasn't he been, like, a butler to the Waynes for, like, his whole life? <laughs> no, but don't get me wrong. The comics do imply that he had a, a history, a younger age in the army, and he did spend time uh, in the theatre, actually. So mm. this is spinning it that he was, like, a full-out spy for some time, and he, that's how he met Thomas Wayne. He's like a... Uh... Like a Christopher Lee type. Who had this super cool life before he got into his career. I guess. Uh, <laughs> but it's had two seasons on Epics, you know, a, a channel that we almost never talk about because it's Epics. Uh, but the news yeah. is, is that apparently there, there's a planned move to HBO Max. Where do you believe that this, the one place where all of DC stuff goes is HBO Max now because they have their own fancy yeah, service. That's true. So, I have nothing to add. I didn't like the pilot, I hated it. So, there you go. You don't like spy stuff, though. I don't, but I, I also hate the concept of doing a young Alfred show. It's, it's just as stupid as when... It does seem like a stretch. When, when Sony were planning doing a young Aunt May movie for a, a minute. Like, I mean, it, it, it didn't happen. But there was Spider-Man? Yeah, there was going to be a young Aunt May movie. Like a solo Based Aunt May movie. Based on the Marissa Tomei version? No, the one before that. This was before the MCU connection. Actually, no, it was, it was during, because it was going to be separate. Like, when the, you know when they were planning to do, like, Sinister Six and, like, do all the villain movies, like, separate from Spider-Man? Oh, yeah. That was during that phase, I think. So maybe Aunt May was going to, like, take them on with a gun or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt May. I don't know anything about Aunt May. Doesn't she run, like, the, the homeless shelter or something? Yes. Apparently she was going to get into adventures when she was young. Maybe it was going to be, like, a love story of how she meets Ben. I don't know. Okay. Hey, it's not happening. So we don't have Everyone's to got a story. Worry about it. Yes, which is stupid and they shouldn't. Stupid prequel <laughs> syndrome, I hate it. All right, uh, speaking of spinoffs, Mayans MC has been renewed for season four at FX. Nothing to add. That, that's the uh, Sons of Anarchy spinoff for anyone who doesn't know Gross. what that is. Yeah. Not my thing either. Um, Netflix, I've got a show from League of Legends. It's called Arcane. League of Legends, the video game. Uh, of course, if anyone doesn't know, it's an animated series. Uh, it's coming from League of Legends publisher Riot Games and is set to premiere later this fall. Set in the utopian region of uh, Peltiver and the oppressed underground of Zon. I don't know if I'm saying these words right. These are just stupid names from the game. Yeah. The story follows the origins of two iconic League champions and the power that will tear them apart. Uh, Arcane is the first for the widely popular League of Legends franchise and marks the first for Riot Games and the studio's first foray into television. So, yeah, this is coming later this year. I hope the fans are happy. I don't. All right, moving on. Uh, we have uh, the cast, and just a, mostly a reminder that this exists, so the, the creators of The Dark, the German show that uh, was fantastic on Netflix, uh, they've got, and the next show coming up on Netflix is called 1899. And we don't know a whole lot about the plot. We know it's set on a ship. Uh, but they've announced a the cast, most of which we, you know, we won't know. Although it is a bilingual or multilingual series because we've got casts that aren't, uh, you know, German or anything. But at least one actor from Dark is there. Uh, Jonas from Dark is in this list. Um, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to list, uh, like, a dozen European actors who all have, you know, names that I'm going to struggle to pronounce. So we're not going to do that. But... I wanted to remind people that this okay. exists, and there is a teaser trailer, which they've not even finished shooting yet, I don't think. The teaser's just, like, some text and, like, a shot of the ship, and it's just kind of like, hey, coming soon. It's very, you know, mysterious. But they're keeping the actual plot of it a bit of a mystery, uh, beyond, the, obviously, the time period, because I would imagine that it's set in 1899. So. Hey, I've heard really good things about Dark, so I'm sure a lot of people are happy about this. As a fan of science fiction and time travel movies, you will probably enjoy it. I know, my father watched it, and he was telling me it was great, too. He doesn't uh, tend to watch, like, foreign things. Yeah. So, there you go. 1899, coming probably maybe towards the end of this year. I would guess next year. 
Unless I've missed a part of the story that said it was coming this year, but I don't think it is. Next up, which I, I mean, I just done that. I just shows the strength of Dark. The Dark became such a success that they're teasing the creator's next project in advance this way. Because a lot of the stuff they don't, they just like, they have a trailer a month before it comes out and that's it. So is Dark finished then? Is it just like two or three seasons and that's it? Yeah, it's finished. Uh, it ended with season three. It had a final story. Mm-hmm. You know, it finished everything. And it had to. Like, see, when you, see once you've watched a few episodes, you realize that it has to have an end point. Like, they had to know where they were going with it the entire time because it just wouldn't have worked otherwise. So, there you go. Uh, next up, HBO Max's Green Letter Show. Uh, it's called Love and Death, a limited series about the true stories of Wiley, Texas housewife Candy Montgomery's murder of Betty Gore in 1980. Elizabeth Wol- yeah, Elizabeth Olsen. I was going to say Elizabeth Wilson. Elizabeth Olsen is going to star as Montgomery in the series from Big Little Lies and the Undoing duo of David E. Kelly and Nicole Kidman, producing for Lionsgate Television. Uh, written by Kelly and directed by Homeland's Leslie Linkick Latter. Love and Death is inspired by the book Evidence of Love, A True Story of Passion and Death in the Suburbs and a collection of articles from Texas Monthly. Uh, so, it revolves around two church-going couples enjoying small-town family life in Texas until someone picks up an axe. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember talking about this when it was like an early development before it like found a home and uh, all that. But it's this true story of this like this woman who just murdered like her neighbour. <laughs> Um, and Elizabeth Olsen is going to play the, the killer so alright well I'm interested <laughs> yeah so it's, it's, I mean obviously Elizabeth Olsen's a, a good reason to be interested uh, that adds a bit of star power to it but uh, lady true crime story okay I'll give it a chance hmm. yeah and you know David E. Kelly has obviously done some things uh, I, I very much enjoy Big Little Lies yes so, yeah, there's reasons to be interested there. Uh, it sounds like it may, I, like I, I'm. It feels like it's going to have a sense of humor, given the way it's written, the description. Like until someone picks up an axe, it sounds like ah, oh, there's a, maybe a mm-hmm. bit of humor to this, the way they'll treat it. But we'll see. Uh, which takes us on to the final news story of the episode. Uh, Night Court. Remember that? I mean, I don't. Of course, I love Harry Anderson. Yeah, I've never. I mean, I've never seen Night Court. I've heard of it, but <laughs> John Larroquette. There is a a reboot or a sequel show that has just been given a pilot order at NBC. That is the news. Uh, Follow up to the classic legal comedy series, uh, and it's going to star the Big Bang Theory's Michelle Roch or Roch. I don't know how. You, I don't know if it's a soft chair or a hard chair, but um. The original series co-star John Lauriquette is reprising his role in the show. I got his name right. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. So it is the sequel then. Yeah. Uh, based on the original series created by Reinhold Weege. Weege? What a name. W double E G E Weege. Could be Weege, I suppose, but I would guess Weege. Yeah, I'm not sure. The multi-camera night court centers on the unapologetic optimist judge, Abby Stone, the daughter of the late Harry Stone, who falls in her father's footsteps as she presides over the night shift of a Manhattan arrangement court and tries to bring order to its crew of oddballs and cynics, most notably former night court prosecutor, Dan Fielding. So... I hope she does... I hope the judge does magic. Because <laughs> Harry Anderson was a magician also. Ah. And he did magic on the show all the time. Would would you re- as someone who enjoys like eighties and nineties sitcoms that were good? Would you recommend this? Uh, yeah, it's fun. Okay, I'll add it to and my to do list. Yeah, it's a fun series. I think I haven't. I mean, I haven't watched it in I actually, ages. But it used to just be like a a regular that was always on TV. What's so funny is that this actor uh, that you know, I know him as the dad from uh, I think Richard. No, not not Richard Rich. What is he in? He's the dad in something. It's not Richard Rich. Who, John Larroquette? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's been in other things. He's in a kid's movie. He's in a... It's, um... A lot of, a lot it... of like, 90s TV stars you'll recognize yeah. in Night Court. Like, a lot of maybe, guest appearances. Maybe he's in... Maybe he's the vil- maybe he's the villain in Richard Rich. But Richard Rich is popular. He's in... Yeah. He's popped up in a lot of things. Yeah. I'm going to look up uh, briefly. I mean, are you excited by the prospect of a sequel? Uh, I mean, if it's good, I I enjoy a good sitcom. I'm not a fan of Big Bang Theory, and there is a connection there, but 
That's um, just an actor, though. I mean, it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean much. Okay, oh, he's in yeah. Star Trek Three. Of, of course, you're a fan. Oh, John Larroquette. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Of course, you're a fan. Why wouldn't you be? Um. There right, we are. Richie Rich. He is in Richie Rich. He's Van Do. That's a really goofy name. <laughs> Van Do. Is he the villain? I think he's the villain. Isn't Richie Rich like a comic series? Uh, yeah, it may have been based on a comic. I can't remember, actually. But Like an Archie-style yes. comic? Nightcore has 193 episodes. How many seasons is that? It's a lot of seasons. Yeah, probably. Sounds about right. It's not as much as Cheers. Uh, nine seasons, yeah. A couple, two, two less than Cheers. That sounds right. I, yeah, I feel like I remember them being on like right after each other. In, yeah, like syndication. There was, I'm pretty sure one of two of the characters cameoed in Cheers because they did that a lot. There was, there was a few NBC mm -hmm. shows that had like a character walk in eight Cheers as just as a. It might have been Larry Kett. Mm. No, Harry Anderson was definitely in Cheers. In the early seasons. Yeah. D does he do yeah, magic? I don't, I don't... Does he do magic on it? Yeah, he does. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I think I remember the character in Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, hey, all right. That's the news. It's done. End on a high. And ended on, yeah, I guess. That was more of a positive note to end on than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. I mean, I don't know TV, but I know 90s TV. That, this, is, this is why it was good. <laughs> Sometimes it just it mirrors things up. Imagine if Connor would be on this episode. He'd just be sitting here going, I've never heard of it. That, that, that'd be his response. You <laughs> Maybe added... he would have been more excited about the other stuff, though. You added some flavor. <laughs> ah, probably not. He's a miserable <laughs> bastard. You know what he's like. Uh, but... <laughs> There you go. Hey, so that is uh, today's news. So hopefully you heard some inter interesting tidbits and you can let us know what you thought in the comments. You can like and subscribe and uh, ding the bell for notifications. That does support us a lot and it's absolutely free. If you want to support us with some money though, you can do that over at patreon.com slash TV and support us for as little as $1 per month and get some bonuses for your troubles. So please go and have a look if you're interested. Um, otherwise, uh, you can get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. But thank you once again for watching and listening. Uh, we'll see you next time on the news, whatever day of the week that might be. Uh, but that is us, so goodbye, and we will see you next time.